yield gap how does it actually help in asset allocation now the question that baffles most investors who have some surplus money to invest is where should this money actually be should it be equity or debt let's try and answer this by looking at a few numbers let's assume that the 10 year gsec is at 9% on the other hand the nifty pe is at 15 now is there some connection between these two numbers can they actually be used to see which market is reasonable and which is expensive you can measure the yield gap to understand this the yield gap is nothing but a ratio of gsec yield in the debt market and the earnings yield in the equity market the gsec yield is straightforward it is the yield that you can read off the yield curve you can look at the benchmark yields the one year the five year the 10 year to know what the gsec yields are the earnings yield is the comparison of earnings per share with the price so the earnings yield is nothing but eps divided by the market price now wait a minute does this not sound familiar yes this is the inverse of the pe ratio So actually to get the earnings yield all you have to do is divide 1 by the PE ratio. Let's actually go back to the problem on hand. The 10 year GSEC is at 9%. The Nifty PE at 15, which means that the earning yield is 1 divided by 15, which is equal to 6.67%. We now can compare the two. The debt yield is at 9% and the earnings yield is 6.67%. We can actually make a ratio of these two numbers. The debt yield divided by the earnings yield, which is also called the yield gap. In our example, the yield gap is 9 divided by 6.67, which is 1.35. Debt is doing better than equity, so more money should be in debt and less in equity. Let's look at another scenario. Suppose the PE ratio is 12 and the GSEC yield is 7%. What is the yield gap? How should we invest? The PE of 12 means an earning yield of 1 divided by 12 which is 8.33%. The yield gap now becomes 7 divided by 8.33 which is 0.84 or less than 1. In this scenario we will need to allocate more to equity and less to debt. The yield gap helps in making simple rules to allocate between equity and debt. The number is based on how attractive one is compared to the other. The yield gap which is greater than 1 means debt is more attractive and therefore the investments should be more in debt and less in equity. The yield gap less than 1 means equity is more attractive and therefore more money should be in equity to an investor wishing to hold both equity and debt and review the portfolio based on a rule the yield gap is a useful tool rule based changes to allocation is also called dynamic asset allocation it takes away the human element in revising a portfolio that sure can be useful DSP BlackRock now brings to you a product that works on the yield gap model. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.